Now, three million of us have added a pet wow. to the family since the first time we went into lockdown yeah. a year ago. Uh, one such person, Tiffany Kingdon from Tamworth, she did just that, buying what she thought, oh, look at it, it was a miniature cockapoo called Winnie. Turns out, wasn't so miniature. And uh, weighing in at five stone, it's now the same size as a baby rhino. They both join us now. First things first, Tiffany, you have a lovely <laughs> dog on your hands there. That is a gorgeous dog. Oh, look. Thank you. She's oh. having a nice chill at the... See yes. how long her legs... <laughs> oh, lovely. So tell us how this came about. Um, so, um, we wanted a dog, me and Liam, my other half, because um, he's in the army and he works away a lot, so I wanted something to keep me company. So on my birthday last year, we started looking, um, went online and saw someone advertising for cockapoos, and I was like, oh, my gosh, I've got to have a cockapoo they're so gorgeous and I knew they were a good size you know they weren't too big um she says <laughs> and my mum's got a mosquito. well obviously if you and, have a bigger uh, dog it's going to cost more money yeah to feed that dog and I suppose like, you didn't want to do that did you no that's it exactly she eats so much food <laughs> it's like having a and, you know, we budgeted and worked out that we could afford a little dog. And now she's like, you, don't you? <laughs> um, but I wouldn't change it for the world. So, yeah, um, we we went to the breeder. We saw Winnie and we was like, oh, my gosh, we've got to have her. And she looked like a normal cockapoo. So you know, she, she looked, she was fairly small. Um, we saw the mum, who was a cocker spaniel, who you could see had just had puppies. Um, we had paperwork. She was microchipped. It, it really did seem all very genuine. So then when I brought her home and her legs just shot out and she was getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> Tiffany, when you went to the breeder and you saw the mum, did you say, and, and there's the dad around? They were like, no, 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 dad's out the back. Don't worry about the dad. Yeah, yeah. so I was like, what's the dad? They were like, a miniature poodle. And it, it just seemed fine. I, I asked all the questions. And I think we did what we, what we could to know that it was legit. So Yeah, yeah. That's so bad, isn't it, though? Just... Rocking up and then getting completely a different dog. So he wants a cockapoo. And this was actually mixed with a uh, Irish setter and a poodle, which gave you this beautiful <laughs> dog. And, and you've, you've actually fallen in love with this dog, haven't you? Oh, yeah, she's amazing. She's great. I wouldn't change it for the world. And I think now I'd only have a bigger dog because it's what I'm used to, but... It is a shock. And I was like going on Facebook and saying, has anybody got a cockapoo this big? Because she just isn't. <laughs> st <laughs> She's got this, not just me. Tiffany, um, what was the, no. when was the moment? When did the growth spurt start? Because obviously, like you said, we've just seen pictures. So to start with, you had a lovely kind of, you know, a cockapoo looking dog. And then when was the moment that uh, you thought, hello, 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 something's not right here? Probably about five to six months when she was getting pretty big and really long legs and we'd go on walks and people would say, she's a big cockapoo. Are you sure she's a cockapoo? Yeah. You know, is she a labradoodle or a golden doodle? And I was like, I don't know. So this is when kind of the DNA tests come in, into play then. It was like, we, we do want to know what she is because, but she does look, she's got kind of a cockapoo face. Yeah, totally. So people were like, she doesn't look like a cockapoo, but she's just huge. <laughs> So you were able to do a D... It was like, who do you think you are for dogs? You were able to do, like, a <laughs> DNA test for Winnie yeah. and then work out... Oh, that's great. So, I, I love yeah. the fact that you turned into Sherlock, Tiffany. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I had to know. And it's so funny because dogs obviously don't understand and all I kept saying to her was, you're an Irish doodle, you're not a cockapoo, you're an Irish doodle. <laughs> But Tiffany, right. maybe it was meant in the stars because you've actually fallen in love with this dog. You absolutely yeah. love her. You wouldn't, would you give her away? If I said, right, give me your dog, would you let me have your dog? <laughs> she froze, oh, look, she was sorry. so... <laughs> I had to know. So absolutely shocked no. by your <laughs> questions. Like, absolutely not. Oh, oh that's brilliant. lovely, that's Tiffany. Dr Scott, we, we, you, you join us now to talk a little bit more about it, slightly, in a okay. slightly, I guess, more serious manner, because Tiffany's a lovely, happy ending for her, but it's not always like that. So what do you need to look for if you're out there getting, getting a dog? Well, it uh, is a very common story that I hear regarding, uh, you know, Tiffany and buying dogs. The pandemic really has allowed a smokescreen for a lot of uh, unscrupulous uh, breeders to sell 
dogs that are a different kind of breed, um, maybe not particularly healthy, um, they're, they're offloaded at the roadside. Uh, I know that even Tiffany asked to see the parents, which is great. That's not what everyone that I talked to um, um, asked for. And it's just so important that you've done a lot of research beforehand because certainly, uh, Tiffany, I love the relationship you've got with Winnie. It's clear you guys are absolutely in love. But unfortunately, you know, a big dog like that might not suit, um, say, you know, an apartment lifestyle. And if you had an apartment and, and you know, you didn't have a garden, you might that might mean that um, Winnie has to then find another home. Mm. So, Dr Scott, where is the best place to go and find a dog and know that you're going to get what it says on the tin, shall we say? Right, well, there has been a, a two million uh, rise uh, in dog ownership in the last 12 months. So that means that dogs are coming from places that they shouldn't probably by overbred uh, females and overseas as well. Uh, and, you know, a lot of the do these dogs aren't healthy um, or if they are healthy, they're maybe not what you had ordered. So what I would say is as um, uh, vets and also massive welfare organisations are seeing a huge rise in the amount of animals going into shelters. So please, please, please don't buy them from breeders anymore. There's more than enough dogs here in the UK to be homed and rehomed because if it was like Tiffany, as we mentioned, if Winnie wasn't able to, to fit into her home, Winnie would need to find a new home. And there is countless dogs about that age, six to nine months of age, the owners are now going back to work. The kids are going back to school. The shiners come off the puppies and now they're needing a new home. So don't go and get a puppy. Get one from a rescue centre. Hashtag adopt, don't shop. I mean, I'm all for that. But if people really, they, you know, they've got their hearts set on a, on a specific breed, what are the best ways to go about checking whether that breed is legit? So, you know, the super sleuth stuff can uh, be done from home as well. So uh, one thing that um, people are saying with uh, unscrupulous breeders is if there's a mobile number, you can actually put that mobile number into a search engine and then search to see if that number is associated with people like Tiffany who are outing them and saying, hey, you know, th this is not, uh, this breeder hasn't told the whole truth about where these dogs have come from. It is uh, um, a law now against being a third party seller. So that's called Lucy's Law. And basically it stopped people um, buying, say, you know, 10 German Shepherds and 10 uh, Cockapoos and, and, uh, and 10 Border Collies and then selling them at a separate site where you can't meet the parents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that is now illegal. We Definitely. knew you need to make sure that you meet the parents. That's really important that you ask for all the paperwork beforehand. And just in the same way... Thanks, Doctor. Sorry, we've just run out of time, but... Uh, but you oh, know, sure. Great. No, great, great, great points. And thank you great so advice. much, Tiffany and Winnie, thank as well. Great to see us.